Get over here! Good morning ladies and gents, so I'm back with another conference play video this time around we're going to be looking at the new weapon class, what I think you need to be building in terms of rune and attribute points and I'm going to be giving you pretty much everything you need to know about the new weapon class and how to play it. Now I have been playing it now since the release and I am very much enjoying it. Um, coming from a medium armor glaive which is obviously all about the damage and everything, going into a class which has decent CC ability, decent damage output, a little bit squishy so that is a bit of a weakness for it but it is a really nice class. I never really clicked with the dual blade but with this class I seem to be, feel that I am much better kind of suited to this kind of play style. So just going into all of my attribute points now the jewelry is still out on whether the best way to go is 100% piercing or uh, agility sorry or 100% strength because the skills are a bit of a mix and match. What I mean by that is the primary damage output skill of yours is this leap and slash and this leap and slash is a strength based skill much like your normal attack as well obviously with that you are going to be putting out a fair bit more damage if you go 100% strength every other skill though is piercing which means it is an agility based skill however the other skills do not seem to put out nearly as much damage as the base level leap and slash and I have found myself having to kind of finish heroes off with my normal attack which obviously is benefited by the strength bonus. I personally would say right now go 100% strength, I have tried it with agility, it doesn't seem to put out nearly as much damage. Um, it. <sighs> It does help you with some of the skills, but like I said, they're not as damage kind of heavy as the Sleep and Slash one, which is all about strength. Um, and I'm going to show you some runes to kind of improve your agility anyway in a minute. So, as soon as you can, obviously go onto the skills page. Once you have unlocked the uh, weapon class, you do that by going into the season challenges, going onto weapon chain and dart. You will then have a page of uh, stuff you need to complete. Once you've completed that, you will be able to unlock the new weapon class, go into every other page, and this one is definitely one that you want to get, so this allows you to use your trap prey skill straight off the back of a horse, which is very, very useful if you are chasing people down. Um, all the others just give you kind of weapon skins, hero skins, all the rest of it, and then you get the uh, sand scorpion schematic right at the end. Don't worry too much about these other pages. Um, I mean, this is a really nice armor set, so I'm really trying to grind for that. Um, but really get the first two pages done so you can unlock the weapon and then unlock this horseback ability. Going back into the skills then, like I said, go 100% strength and then you want to be unlocking all of these nodes as quickly as you can. These will be using your uh, skill points or your weapon points. Um, these now cross across all weapon classes, which is very, very nice because they used to be just specific for the weapon class, which is a pain in the ass. They do cross now, so just that the more you play, the more of these you will unlock. What I would recommend doing first, though, if you've only got a certain amount of uh, skill points to use, unlock all of these skills in Leap and Slash first, then go for Trap Prey, then go for Scorpion Snare, and then all the rest you can just do whenever, to be honest, just, just go through all the rest at your will. So this one first, then this one, and then this one. So talking of the skills, I've not actually described them yet. So these are all skills that you cannot change. However, you can move them around. So if you want them uh, combined to different keys, then you can do that. Obviously, apart from your Trap Prey, you can't move that one. Um, so you have your Leap and Slash, which is your really big damage output skill. You've got your Scorpion Snare, which is your CC ability. It does a fair bit of damage, but you're using this more for the CC effect. R is your Sandstorm, this is your escape ability, it does do an AOE damage of everything around you as well. This is actually directly affected by the strength um, ability, uh, attribute points as well, uh, because this is just blunt damage, but you are not using this to, to damage stuff, you are using this just to literally escape. And then you've obviously got your Trap Prey, this is another CC ability, it traps them for a couple of seconds, and then you can combo all the rest of your skills. The best combo I have found is initiate a fight with your trap prey, close that gap down really, really quickly, then hit them with the CC scorpion snare. This will now trap them for another couple of seconds and then you can unleash your sleep and slash ability. 
finish them off with your normal attacks or with your right click which is the stinging strike now this does do piercing damage doesn't do a huge amount however this reduces the cooldown very quickly on your scorpion snare so you can then hit the scorpion snare again repeat or the combo again I don't seem to have really any difficulty against light armors, medium armors, or heavy armors at all. However, I because I am a light armor class, because this is a light armor class, you do get swamped very, very quickly, especially by units. This class is not a unit killing class. It is a hero killing class. It is a flank around the side of the main fight. Pick off enemy heroes which come have come away too far away from their units and then get out of there. You do not want to be in sustained frontline fighting with this class because you are not going to be lasting very long at all. Going into the runes, so these are the best runes that I have found so far. So going on to the weapon, I have used the Scorpion Snare damage is increased by 10%, Slashing Defense Reduction is increased, by, uh, increased from 5 to 10, and Duration is increased by 2. Really, really useful. I would recommend this one all day long. Uh, Sting and Strike damage is increased by 6%, and Block Rate is increased by 30%. Again, this seems a lot more useful than the... Um, Puskin, which is the other weapons uh, rune. Sandstorm now throws gravel during the escape, reducing the accuracy of range units, to be honest. Because you're going to be escaping and running away, you're going to be literally hitting that R ability or using your um, using that escape ability, and then you're dodging straight out of there anyway. Ranged units aren't really going to have much chance to hit you if you are quick off your heels. Um, going down into the uh, Rogue's Hood. Now, while on the capture point, your damage dealt increased by 12 percent Really, really useful in sieges increases toughness by five points just gives you a little extra tiny bit of survivability increases strength by and toughness by two going down to your armor increases stamina by 100 points really really useful because a lot of your oh your right click skill uses stamina so this obviously gives you a little bit more increases armor by five points again touch of survivability for you increases strength and toughness by five Going down to the boots, this is one I recommend for all hero classes, not just this class, but all hero classes. Bandage duration is reduced by 40% while healing the same amount. You do have to stand still, unfortunately, and it is interrupted by bleed and poison, so just bear that in mind. But this is a very useful skill. Reduces the time it takes you to heal up so you can get straight back into the fight very, very quickly. Crystal agility by 5 points, so I've stuck this one on just to have that little bit of extra piercing and slashing penetration kind of bonus. Not a huge amount, but just gives you a little bit more. Crystal strength and toughness by 2. You can probably see where I'm going with this. Crystal strength by 5. Uh, every time you perform a normal attack, critical value is increased by 9 points for 6 seconds. Stackable up to 7 times. Really, really recommend this one. Seems to make a massive difference. You do seem to have to use your normal attack ability a fair bit amount um, using this class. After your combos, initiating your combo, combos, all the rest of it, you will be using your normal attack. So this is a really, really useful skill. Increases damage dealt by 2%. So I did a very quick bit of maths this morning. And as long as your, as long as your uh, slashing damage, which it will be, as long as your slashing damage is above 600, then you need to be using increases damage dealt by 2% rather than the increases strength and toughness by 2 points. The reason why I say that is because 1% of 600 is 6. So it actually would be more beneficial using that one if that was the case. However, all of our slashing damage, I don't care who you are, what level you are, what armor you got, all the rest of it, all of our slashing damage is over a thousand, which makes this one a lot more useful than that base strength and toughness by two points. Base strength and increase strength and toughness by two points. This will increase your slashing damage by 12. Um, for me, increases damage dealt by 2%. I believe it is something like 28 or 30. Uh, or is it 38? 38 it increases it by so it is a lot more beneficial for me to be using that skill there or that rune sorry obviously you want to be kind of uh, I am in the middle of redoing all my armor sets at the minute but as always you want to be looking for stuff that has leadership uh, strength is then your next kind of uh, point that you want on your armor sets critical value and then everything after that so leadership strength critical value that's what you want on your armor sets 
Um, I have got the best weapon in the game for this uh, class. I am trying to get this up to a legendary. Um, it's not overly helpful, or it's not help. It's not working for me at the minute because my RNG is terrible. Um, but that is going to be the best weapon. Even the purple, um, even the purple Zana's greeting is actually better than a legendary first blood. So the first blood is like the tier below it. Um, Zana's greeting is like the chained art and scimitar weapon. So if you have crafted a purple one of these, compare it to whatever else you've got. I would 99% say it's probably better if it is a Zana's greeting anyway. So I'm going to leave the video here. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this has helped a few of you out. Are you enjoying the new weapon class? Are you enjoying fighting against the new weapon class? I think it is quite well balanced because yes, it does pump out a fair bit of burst damage. However, it's so easily and so quickly swarmed and I get absolutely destroyed by units. Uh, so it's not like a mall where I can just take on literally everyone and anyone and not suffer anything bad. I do get swamped very, very quickly and I'm sure you do as well if you are playing this class. Let me know your thoughts though. Let me know if you are playing the class a little bit differently to me. Um, that's a bit worrying if you are. Thank you very much for watching though, folks. Hit that share button, hit that sub button, all that lovely fan doobie tassel stuff. And I hope to catch you out on the battlefield. Thank <laughs> you.